Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Houdini and Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create a looping emitter in Houdini and export it to Unreal Engine for use with Niagara. So we're going to start in Houdini and the first thing that we need to have installed uh, is the Houdini Labs. So this is a really useful toolkit and you should always install it basically. So um, if you don't have it running, we can check that it is. Go up to the shelf here at the top, click the plus icon, go to shelves and then to side effects labs. If you select that, uh, you can see that I've already got it installed. If you don't have it installed, you just need to click the update tool set button and that will pop up a window and this will allow you to update and install your version of side effects labs. And we're gonna need this plugin for the translation from Houdini to Unreal Engine. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. The next thing that we need to get is the Houdini to Niagara plugin. And this uh, can be installed for your specific version of uh, Houdini and Unreal. I'm gonna be using Unreal version 5.0. So I'm gonna be going into this version here and I can just grab this zip and uninstall it from that. The installation is very simple. Once you've downloaded the zip, you can extract it and you'll get this folder inside here. And basically we wanna copy this Houdini Niagara folder to our Unreal Engine source directory. So for me, I'm in the Epic Games folder where my UE5 installation is, and I need to go into Engine, Plugins, FX, and this is where we'll paste it. So you see I've already done it here, Houdini Niagara, and this will work as a global plugin for all of your projects. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into creating the particle emitter. So we're gonna start with the Geo node here in Houdini, dive in there we'll create sphere now this can be any uh, mesh that you want just make sure it is a polygon mesh and um, so I'll keep this fairly procedural we'll create a uh, actually we'll subdivide this so it's got a little bit more topology just for the creation of our points and then we'll create a group and rename that to OS. that should be its default but I have just reinstalled Houdini to update to 19 and we'll call this uh, birth underscore group as this is going to be where the points are birthed from and then we want to change this to a points group and we want to disable base group and enable keep in bounding box and then with the bounding box we will just shift it down to sort of the lower third there so this is where the uh, points are going to sort of generate from and next we're going to create a pop neck network and we want to plug the birth group into both the first and second input or the zero and the one input on the dot network and we'll dive in there and then we have our source first input we want to go to source group and that just check that's gonna there we go sometimes you need to go back to frame one to get that to refresh birth group and um, you'll see there that is now selected so if i just run through you'll see points are generating on that so that is all good now the next thing is we don't need this merge so we can get rid of that and we'll just move our source into the uh, one input on our pop solver next thing we're going to create is a sop solver and plug that in there between the source and the pop solver and if we dive in there what we want to do is create a ray node and make sure you set the method to minimum distance and we'll plug the first input into there and then we want an obj merge and that will go into the second input and the object that we're going to be calling is the second input path um, so that will be the path that you want to use there um, so just feel free to copy that from what i've got on screen there rather than me reading it out so now we've got the points growing on the screen there not much else happening that's fine we just need to create some sort of force to move them we can use a pop wind chuck it in there and set the wind direction to one on the y-axis and you'll see that starts to run over the geometry and actually we just need to set the uh, rays entity to points otherwise uh, that won't work quite as what we want okay and i've just gone off context and down again uh, just to be able to 
get rid of that sphere. So now we've got our points there and they will be birthing and they'll be following the silhouette of the sphere. And you can do whatever you want to these points. Um, so you can add some amplitude to the swirl size and then they'll get a little bit swirly as they generate, uh, which looks fun. Why don't we make it even more? Maybe a bit too much. All right, so that's pretty fun. Uh, but we've got a lot of points here at the moment. We're on, um, we're on 18,000 points, which is too many to start with. Um, if you want to bake out some really high um, point cloud sort of situations, you are welcome to do so. But just to keep the file size down, we're going to reduce the birth rate. And we're actually going to key in the birth rate here. And I want to work within 120 frames. So I'm going to reduce this down to 120 frames. Just keep this nice and simple for everyone to follow along with. Okay, so we're going to work with 240 frames here, which is 10 seconds, so keep that in mind. We're going to set the birth rate on frame 1 to 0. So move to frame 1 and Alt click on that. And then on frame 48, we'll set the birth rate to 100. You can set this to whatever you want. I'm just going to go with 100 to keep the um, point count low. And then it's going to remain at 100 until frame 192. So this is two seconds from the end. So we'll alt click that, so it's remaining at 100. And then on frame 240, zero, alt click there. So what we'll get is the points being birthed. Just turn this on so you can see them a bit better. Points being birthed, swirling around for a bunch of seconds there, and then slowly dying. Might reduce their life expectancy because it's hanging around a bit longer than what I'd like. There we go. Um, so they don't quite disappear there. That's not going to be a problem for us though because of the way we're going to loop this. So this is just basically as long as you've got them starting and sort of gradually dissipating, that is going to be fine. So in terms of art direction, you can do whatever you want to your points, but um, for this example, this is going to be fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a make loop node. So this is called the labs make loop. And what it does is it allows us to create a loop that's going to work with uh, Niagara. If you try to do this uh, with a time shift method, which is probably the more common way to do a loop, um, you're going to run into issues because of the way that the time attribute works uh, with Niagara. So what we need to do here is set our start and end frame to 240, that's fine, and um, we want to set our input type to particle, and we want to change the dead after loop end, we're going to change that to remove particle. And then particle wrap mode, we're going to set to die at end and respawn as new particle at the start. And we'll just set this fade in duration to sort of like 0.1 probably is fine and 0.1 for the fade out. So if we're looking here, we should get a pretty good loop now where it's just constantly emitting particles as a nice little loop and you don't see it sort of fade in and out as you can see here running through to the end. So nice and seamless. So then finally, we just need to create a Niagara node and plug that in there and just make sure that your frame range is set correctly. So one to 240 and it's going to put this in my um, geo geometry subdirectory and I'm going to name this fx loop one. And then I will render this and it renders very quickly and it should be quite a small file if you're only working with that many particles. I'm only working with about 200 particles at the most. So there is our FX loop Niagara file. And you can see it only comes through 1.5 megs for 10 seconds worth of looping. So next let's jump into Unreal Engine. So the first thing we want to do is copy, copy our FX loop uh, from our Houdini project to our Unreal project. So we're just going to copy that there and we'll just paste in here. I've created a folder just in the contents directory here called FX loop, uh, called FX test and that will be located there. So once I'm in Unreal Engine, uh, you'll see that it is in this FX test folder and uh, control space to reveal that if it's not currently visible for you for whatever reason. Um, and I like to dock that in the layout. So you will also need to enable the, the Niagara plugin if you haven't already. So Houdini Niagara, make sure we, that is uh, enabled and obviously the Niagara FX system. Um, I've got all the extra content enabled just by default, as you can see. And also, just before we go any further, we just want to make sure we show plugin content, and that will actually um, 
make everything visible there. And most importantly, if we right click here in the content browser and go to effects, we get a Niagara system and create an empty Niagara system. And we'll call this Houdini FX. And we can double click on that. Okay, so let's bring that Houdini particle system in. So we're just gonna hit tab, uh, right, right click and add emitter and we'll just type in Houdini we'll get Niagara basics. So if that's not coming up, that will be because you have not enabled show plugin content there. And obviously if you have not uh, enabled the plugin and we do not need to be playing back. So it's just gonna show the default emitter by default. And we're just gonna select the spawn particles from Houdini point cache. We're gonna select the uh, sample spawned Houdini point and the sample point cache. So just control clicking all of those will make them all visible there. And then what we can do is just from the content browser here, just grab this effects loop, just drag, left click and drag it in to all three of those. So now, just zoom in there a little bit. If we play it back, you'll notice that it just gives us our particles doing their thing from start to finish. Now this is the incredibly basic version of how to do this workflow. Uh, we're going to continue to work on this and add some extra things to it in the future. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed for those tutorials coming out very shortly um, for lots of new Unreal tutorials and Houdini tutorials to go along with it. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.